good afternoon everyone well yeah it's a little afternoon everyone welcome back to the channel glad you could join me today we have a 2012 dodge charger has the money light on the lady wants me to figure out what's going on so let's uh dive in and see what we got We've started it on this brisk day. It's about zero degrees outside, zero degrees Fahrenheit. For those of you that use the Celsius, uh, this is Fahrenheit. So um, it's chilly out here, but it is, I mean, it's clear, uh, not windy. It's all good. So yeah, come along. This should be interesting. Let's see what we got. Contact. Alright, we've done a coat scan and we have oof, we have crankshaft, camshaft timing misalignment. We have bank sensor, bank one sensor one and bank one camshaft two position slow response. This has the V6 motor in it, the 3.6 liter V6. It also has a multiple cylinder misfire. I'm not feeling that at this point in time. However, um, I think what we need to do, excuse me, we need to get these two bottom codes figured out before we dive into that one, simply because um, if that thing is slow to respond, what this thing has is cam phasers, and if they're slow to respond, or, you know, if the sensor is showing a misalignment we may be picking up a multiple cylinder misfire through that so um, I'm gonna it's been a long time since I've done any kind of work on this motor I'm gonna have to do a little research on those codes and familiarize myself with it but what I, I do know I want to do is I want to come in here to live data we're going to go into engine possibly. I want to see what our cam timing is doing on bank one here. Um, let's see here. Exhaust cam one crank difference. Um, desired and actual is off by a little bit. Okay. That's, that's off by probably more than what it should be. Let's look here. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Intake cam one. Crank difference. Actual position and desired. So we, that's very close. Uh, intake cam two. But what we're concerned about, so I guess well it's not that's not that bad right there's pretty close because we're not concerned about intake cam 2 uh, what we're concerned about looking at is intake cam 1 and exhaust cam 1 the actual and desired uh, intake is close our exhaust cam is off by almost well it is to almost two and a half degrees so the actual and desired is off on the exhaust now we could have a cam phaser or we could have a I, I would venture to say it's probably not a can or a timing chain and the reason I say that is be, unless unless there's like four different timing chains but our we don't have a misalignment on all of them it's just the one side and even on that the intake cam is running exactly where they want it to run so if I was guessing I'd be guessing that we're looking at possibly either a sensor 
or a phaser now I say guessing I'm not necessarily guessing because guessing in this job is not a good idea what I'm looking at or what I'm doing when I say I'm guessing I'm running options and scenarios through my head so yeah I want to know um, I, I just I just like to think things through a little bit so let's see when we run down the road what we've got here not really noticing a uh, running issue just yet we do have two front tires that are low I can imagine that's possibly due to the frigid temperatures so actual yeah we do have a an exhaust cam one is moving slowly exhaust cam two belt on for safety let's turn down this country road and we'll uh, pull over now that we got the engine up to operating temperature and I just want to see what we're looking at on our camshaft here uh, once again the actual and desired are off um, by two degrees so I'm guessing that's going to be a problem. Um, intake cam one, actual and desired, is within a half a degree. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Intake cam two is off by a half a degree as well. Um, exhaust cam two. I don't know why I don't have an actual undesired position on that. So, alright, I'm going to have to go back and I'm going to have to do a little bit of research on what I can do for testing procedures on that code and what I need to be looking at. I want to get all my knowledge built up on that and then I will be back. So hang tight, I'll be back shortly. All right, so we've got service data pulled up here. And uh, so what we have got is this is gonna be, a, both of these codes are for the right side, so the passenger side exhaust cam. Um, I was thinking that uh, the bank one sensor one, and then we had bank one camshaft two, I thought that meant that there was two different camshafts, but as we can see here, um, this is going to be down here. This is all bank one exhaust camshaft, and bank one is going to be this bank over here. So we're looking at this camshaft here on the exhaust side is what's going to be affected. Now, what... <sighs> What we've got here is we're going to have to fix, according to service data, we're going to need to fix this code, P0016, before we can diagnose any of the others. And nine times out of ten, according to what I'm reading here, is that this one is probably caused because of this one. So... Uh, I'll just read off this uh, theory of operation or kind of give you an, a, a down and dirty on it. Um, so what this, uh, th you get a misalignment fault, it accounts for angular deviation between the CMP sensor, which is the camshaft, camshaft position sensor, and the CKP sensor, which is the crankshaft position sensor, uh, due to misbuilds, chain stretched, or skip tooth. This fault here that we're looking at results from the difference between the positions as indicated by the CMP and the CKP sensor. 
The result is only valid if both positions are locked. So basically, when this thing goes into an idle mode, the camshaft has a pin that locks the uh, timing in, and I believe it's supposed to be at 117 degrees, according to um, what uh, what I'm looking at or found here. Uh, it was 117 degrees. So a few things that this thing could be caused by caused by is uh, oil, contaminated oil. Um, they said that, uh, or they're saying here that this uh, they're saying that this 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 could not be caused so so one of the things is a missing or erratic cmp or ckp signal cannot cause a cam crank misalignment fault to set so replacing either sensor will not fix the vehicle so let's not throw a camshaft position sensor which is going to be on the back side here and that camshaft position sensor is actually the sensor for both camshafts so it goes down in between the two and has a reading off of each side of it where it you know so one sensor reads both now um so replacing the sensors is not going to fix the problem what they're saying and what uh, makes sense to me is that there's this ocv which is the operate oil control valve not operation the oil control valve uh can get stuck so there's a spring from what i understand there's a spring inside here or the um, with a spool and uh, that redirects the flow um, so normally what these two codes are caused by is either contaminated oil um, you have a sticking uh, phaser which is going to require uh, pulling the phaser off of the camshaft and replacing it or we could have an oil control valve that is faulty now in order for this thing to set, uh, it's going to have to be, um, so, when monitored and set conditions. So the difference between cam bank one, exhaust cam shaft position, and the crank shaft position is more than 10 degrees. So, our one to two degrees that we had there uh, is not going to set this thing. Now, that may be a sign that there's something going on but it should not uh, cause that to set. Now, I think what I would like to do, since it's pretty easy to get those, uh, the oil control valve off of the front there, um, well, first of all, what we're gonna do, we're gonna check the oil level, make sure the oil level's good, um, but I'm gonna pull that oil control valve off the front. We're gonna just look in through there and see if there's anything that we can figure out um, that, we can see that's like a smoking gun here it is so easy to take off let's go ahead and do that and then we'll uh go from there if we don't see anything obvious then we're going to go through and uh see if we can figure out which one it is i did not hear a rattling sound um when it was uh when it first started so it doesn't seem like it would be a timing chain but you know we really don't want to assume anything so um hopefully this under hopefully this helps you to understand what's going on here um and once you understand the theory of operation it usually helps to guide you in your diagnostic steps so that's how i like to do it i don't like to start diagnosing something when i don't understand the base operation or the theory of operation. So let's get out there. We'll get that oil control valve removed and let's see if there's anything that we can see that is like a smoking gun. And we'll go in there and we'll check the, we'll go ahead and check, make sure that there's nothing loose in the cam um, that we can see. And maybe we can get to the timing chain too. I don't know, but let's, let's check everything out and then we'll, just keep going until we find something wrong. So we're gonna pull this intake off of here and get ourselves some access to the oil control valve on the front. 
that up there so I can lose it up there and not in the engine. Alright, so we have a mass airflow sensor here that we need to unplug. Perfect. Now, it's going to be this, this sensor right, or this oil control valve right here that we're after. Should just pop right off of there. Then we'll have a torque, maybe a T... Yeah, T25 maybe. Yes, perfect. So according to service data, we can take this thing off and we can operate it with the scan tool and just make sure that everything works. So we might do that while it's apart anyway. And of course I said I was gonna check the oil and I forgot all about it, but we're this far, we're gonna go ahead and take this off. Um, that moves in and out like I believe it should. It turns, moves. Okay. Everything seems to work. There's nothing loose here, but I can't see the timing chain either, so it doesn't look like we have excessive wear on the chain. I can see it down through there. Um, it looks like this this one is operated by the same one, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not a chain because it's an intermittent fault because we were, we were within our 10 degrees. So the conditions we've seen were not going to cause a check engine light to come back on. So let's go ahead and check the oil level. It's definitely in the safe zone. Uh, we'll look at our oil change interval here. Let's make sure, okay, 159.931. Uh, um, oh, we're like 6,200 miles over. And I know for a fact that, uh, cause I used to work there, that they go 5,000 miles on the sticker. Uh, um, we should probably advise to change oil in this thing unless she changed the oil herself uh since then <laughs> well how about how about we check in on that as well because if she hasn't changed oil and it's got about eleven thousand miles on the oil change that could be a problem but i'm going to do something here Let's see if this thing operates the way it should, it's designed to. All right, so what we wanna do, we wanna go in here, VVT exhaust phaser one, and let's see if we can actuate that thing. And it, as you can see, it's moving. So, There is a little catch in there though. Yeah, I th don't like that. Because down in this area, it really sticks. Uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be a problem, actually. That is much a problem, because it sticks down in that lower position. This part here is fine. Now it's working just fine. Okay, yep, that's a problem because down in this position, it was hanging up pretty badly a while ago. Yep, there it goes again. If I move it back and forth a little bit, it frees up. So, yeah, there's, yep, there it frees up. 
Okay, I think, yeah, I'm gonna advise that we change this thing because that thing sticks when it's in this position, which should be, in my opinion, this is gonna be a locked position. And when that happens and then it wants to move and it doesn't move. So let me, let me see what that's gonna cost. But I really think that we're gonna be looking, this thing, I'm pretty, I'm, I, well, I know it was sticking in that. And if I moved it enough, I could get it to free up. So uh, yeah, why don't we slide that back on there? We'll uh, go ahead and put this back together. We've probably got a code for the mass airflow sensor now. No worries, we'll clear that. But we need to get her a new oil control valve and um, advise if she hasn't changed the oil that she needs to change the oil. So, hang tight. All right, so we've got our new piece here. It is a Mopar piece. Um, that number. Be sure and order per your VIN. Make sure you get the right one. But uh, if you remember, the old one was sticky and would stick at the end. This one is smooth all the way through. So what I think was happening is this thing was uh, sticking and not uh, moving the way it should. Partially because of the oil change. So customer gave us the green light to do the oil change. We're going to go ahead and change this thing. And... Um, clear the codes and see if they come back. Take it on test drive and see if they come back. All right, so we have got this thing put back together and we're out on a test drive. I'm actually going to be driving it a little ways, a um, little distance, due to uh, uh, this code may not come back right away. It may take it a little bit. Um, so I want to go through, put it through all its cycles and courses, so to speak. But uh, so far, it's running well, and everything seems to be working. Now, um, just, uh, I think I might have went over that, I'm not 100% sure, but the mis multiple misfire codes can be caused by the um, slow response code to the for the camshaft for the yeah camshaft phaser uh, so according to service data we need to get the camshaft problems figured out before we go to any misfire codes which i suspect because the engine or the computer wanted this thing to advance or retard the camshaft and it was slow to respond therefore it will uh, pull up misfires because it will actually uh sit and shake and probably have a low uh, low power issue at the time so what I suspect happened is that actuator the electric actuator was sticking and causing a slow response uh, we felt an obvious sticking in that so I think that's going to fix our problem I would be surprised if it doesn't so uh, but I've been surprised before. I've had, I've had it happen before. So, where I was wrong, hmm. just earlier today, working on an old 2001 Ford Firestroke, and uh, yeah, well, part of that was is the uh, wiring diagram wasn't quite accurate or doesn't seem to be. So, that's a another problem, another day. But we're gonna drive this thing. I'm gonna put about 30 miles on it probably. And uh, we'll uh, put 30 miles on this thing or so. And then if no codes come back, we're going to send it back to the customer. And she'll have to let me know if it doesn't come back. So unless something comes up, I will end this video here. And I wanna thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being here. I sure appreciate it. We'll uh, go ahead, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you guys a thing, and it sure helps me out a bunch. I appreciate it.
most of all, you guys have yourselves, you men and women, have yourselves a great day.